Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again. With no time to die likely to be the end of this current era of James Bond, fan speculation has quite rightly turned to, well, speculating about what creative direction the filmmakers are going to go down next. Are they going to just recast the role and carry on much as they have for decades, or are they going to go and do something very, very different? A scenario that has been subject of discussion for a while now has been the idea that the films, or perhaps even a separate TV series or spin-off series, could return to the Fleming source material and more faithfully adapt those original works to the screen. Indeed, many Bond films take great liberties when adapting the source material, with the likes of Moonraker, for example, having next to nothing to do with the Fleming novel apart from the title and a character name. There are some cases where the film more or less represents what Fleming put to the page, a Doctor No from Rush With Love, Thunderball and On Her Majesty's Secret Service all spring to mind as being somewhat closer to their original namesakes than most of the other films. Despite this, the more Fleming adhering aspects of movies like For Your Eyes Only, The Living Daylight, and Casino Royale are often cited as being high points of the series. So yeah, if those elements are what audiences and critics love, why not just go back to the source of it all and start doing more faithful adaptations of the works that gave birth to James Bond in the first place? Well, for obvious starters, books and movies are very, very different ways of telling a story. Personally, I have a great deal of affinity for both main elements of the 007 universe, the films and the books, but what works on the page cannot necessarily be translated to the screen exactly and have the same kind of effect. Even in some of the more faithful Fleming adaptations, a screenwriter will oftentimes make changes because they believe it makes the story clearer or it's just a better idea. Goldfinger, for example, in the novel we never actually go inside the Fort Knox vault, but of course in the movie we do and it's a good decision. The vault is designed by Ken Adam is a fantastic cathedral of gold and a, just a perfect place for the climax of that film. Uh, sticking with Goldfinger again, one of the most jarring plot elements from the book is that at one point Goldfinger actually hires Bond to be his personal assistant, and Bond has to take care of some administrative tasks for Goldfinger, and it's very dull and does not make a whole lot of sense. So removing that element from the film also removes a lot of boring stuff and head scratching. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to. Contact HR! Like I say, I'm a big fan of the Fleming books, but they are not all airtight, perfect stories, and they fluctuate in quality dramatically. A Diamond Czar Forever is just a lot of Bond going around a horse racing track and complaining that he's not enjoying the mission that he's on, and not much of it is terribly compelling, so to translate that exactly to the screen just for the sake of having a pure Fleming experience would be misguided, I think. Filmmaking is a much more collaborative medium than writing generally, with lots of various people involved in the various stages of production, and everyone can chip in ideas here and there that may or may not make it through to the final product. Not that I'm saying that writing is necessarily a completely sole thing. I obviously know that more people are involved in the process than just the author. However, it is certainly more pure in that storytelling sense than film is. Another big part of the books that would be quite tricky to translate to the screen is that so much of what occurs on the page is actually occurring in Bond's mind. Fleming was an opinionated chap, and his most famous creation shares a lot of similarities with him, and indeed some of the best parts of the books are the moments in between the plot and the action, and we just have Bond ruminating and musing about the people around him, the places he's in. Heck, he can't even eat a meal most times without going into great detail about every aspect of it. Seriously, if you would faithfully adapt most of the Fleming works to screen, I mean, half of them would feel like cookery shows. But because so much of what we know from Bond in the books comes from internal monologue, presumably any kind of super faithful adaptation would have to include a Bond voiceover or something, given that so much of what works so well on the page are those internal thoughts. But then you run the risk of seemingly making very trivial tangents that would seem out of place in films, where usually character dialogue and actions should either tell you something about the characters or be adding to or pushing along the plot. When Bond makes Stacy that quiche and a view to a kill, not in the short story by the way, I don't think we needed Bond to go on a long-winded tangent about the kinds of eggs he likes and where the best place is to get them. And in the books you can do these things because there isn't that same sense of agency for keeping the plot ticking along like you have in films. Then there's also the fact that Bond of the books has a lot of very grumpy and and curmudgeonly thoughts and opinions. He's very much a complainer, and to have a lead character complaining about literally everything around them for every five minutes is not a very appealing quality in a spy adventure. Again, I'm not saying that these elements of Fleming's writing are a bad thing necessarily. If anything, I think it's a testament to his writing that he can just have, you know, a page and a half of Bond
one sort of musing about where to get the best salmon in the world and it's still engaging, but putting that to film would be very, very different. The Bond character is very different in Fleming to what we typically expect to see on screen too, so there is the aspect to consider of, I mean, if Fleming's Bond was 100% accurately translated to the screen, would audiences even like the guy? Not to say that a protagonist necessarily needs to be likeable, but changes were made for a reason to make James Bond more palatable to a general and global audience at the inception of the series. Ian Fleming was famously not terribly thrilled with the idea of Sean Connery playing the part at first, and yet now if you ask most people to picture James Bond, they would likely see Sean Connery in their mind's eye. Humour is a big element of cinematic Bond as well. Quips and one-liners are just a part of the 007 lexicon, and it's an attractive element for a mass appeal screen hero, having that sense of humour. The Bond of the books does not have much of a sense of humour, though this does vary from book to book, particularly when Fleming himself was clearly being influenced by the adaptations of his own works and started having Bond cracking wise more. Not to say that a humourless protagonist wouldn't work, I can think of plenty in cinema that do, but by now, who James Bond is, is firmly established in audiences' minds, and to divert from that so much could be jarring, and hey, maybe it wouldn't even feel like a James Bond film. I mean, even Dalton and Craig, the two screen Bonds most adhering to the Fleming character, have their fair share of wit and humorous moments. It's the circle of life. But even beyond humour, the Fleming Bond is a complex and in many ways quite dour character and not the dashing hero that always gets the girls that the films have turned him into. As such, it makes him less accessible, I guess. Uh, if we're going to apply the beer and barbecue test to James Bond, for example, would I want, let's say, Roger Moore's Bond over to my house for beer and burgers? Hell yes, I would. I expect he'd be charming company, he'd be cracking wise, and he'd be going down a storm with the other guests. Would I want Fleming's Bond over at my house with beer and burgers though? No, not at all. He'd probably just complain that the beer wasn't the exact right temperature and then refuse any burgers unless they were Aberdeen Angus beef. So ultimately, by adapting Fleming's work with complete faith, we would essentially largely end up with meandering plots that go on long tangents here and there and a very dour leading man. However, of course, this could work in one form or another. Personally, I don't think this version of Bond will ever appear on cinema screens with the kind of budgets that they'd give to the Bond movies of today, but I think if you go smaller, if you go to TV, if you go to different avenues, maybe you could make something really cool. You'd almost certainly need to tweak plot threads here and there, but I'd totally love a super stylized animated James Bond set in the 50s and 60s, something akin to those older skewing animated DC movies, and not James Bond Jr. But I think in a format like that, a kind of grittier, more Fleming Bond set in the 50s and 60s could work. But then you do still have the issues of plot. Uh, you Only Live Twice is one of my very favourite Fleming novels, and honestly the one that has stuck with me the longest since my first read, and I think about it quite a lot. But there's no two ways about it. To adapt that to the screen verbatim would leave you with a film that's just, I mean, half of the film would be just two men chatting about the decline of the British Empire, and then a whole big chunk towards the end would be set in the Garden of Death, and all the stuff that happens in there in the book would be more suited to a horror film. That latter element in particular is something that I want to focus on on in my wrap-up though, because I think when people say that they want to see Fleming more faithfully adapted to screen, I don't think that they mean, like, literally adapting the entire book to screen. I think that they want to see those images that they have in their head, moments that they remember being probably the highlights that they have of those stories, translated into a visual medium. I'm afraid that that's just an impossible task and a thankless job. Obviously, one of the magic things about reading is that you can imagine the pages playing out in your own head. Everyone is their own director, actor, set designer, and with Fleming's descriptions being so lush and detailed, he sets the seen so magnificently, so it's easy to conjure up precisely the images that you want to see in your own mind. Everyone has their own image of what a Fleming Bond novel looks like, and for any one person to come in and adapt it would have the unenviable job of looking at what's on the page and thinking, does this make sense? We need to change that. Well, that isn't as good as it could be. Oh yeah, nice idea actually, let's give that a go. How about if we actually do it this way instead? And before you know it, you've changed the novel into something else, and that's fine because that's what adapting novels for the screen is all about. 
Like I said earlier on, if there's any chance at all of having a period setting bond on any kind of screen, I think it'd have to be a small screen and there will be a conscious effort to separate its universe from the universe of the main film series. Through tweaking and adapting elements from Fleming for decades, James Bond has stayed relevant to the contemporary settings that the movies have been released in, and I think that's good. I wouldn't want James Bond to be a character trapped in the stories he was written in in the 50s and 60s and only those time periods. I like that he has grown and adapted and survived political and social change throughout the decades. Saying that though, it is still something that there are elements from Fleming's novels left to be adapted, and I think that's how I would like my Fleming continuity to exist in these films. Characters and concepts lifted from the source material and tweaked and adapted into something new and fresh. For example, say what you will about Dino the Day, it actually has a lot more in common with Fleming's Moonraker than the film that shares its novel, and I'm fairly certain that we're going to be getting something similar to that with No Time to Die with Rami Malek's character and Fleming's Doctor No, and if this is how they're going to keep Fleming alive in the films, cherry picking bits from here and there and creating something new out of it, I'm fully on board. There's still enough unused material in those pages to inspire writers of the films for years to come. I guess my whole point in making this video was to kind of work out what people really mean when they say they want a 1950s set Bond adventure more faithful to the Fleming material. I don't think there's anyone out there advocating a beat-by-beat -beat transition from page to screen, but I guess when people say that, it's more to do with style and tone than it is the plot. But hey, you know what, maybe there are people out there advocating the beat-by-beat -beat transition, and if you're one of those people, then more power to you. Personally, I don't think it would work without tweaking and changing the source material here and there, and then when you're done tweaking and changing it, you essentially just end up with 1962's Doctor No, 1963's Marisha With Love, 1964's Goldfinger, and so on. That is it for this time, Bond fans. If you've enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date on future uploads, then please do go below and hit the subscribe button. You can also below find links to my various social media pages, including my Facebook account, my Twitter account, and my Patreon page. For those of you who really like this channel and want to go one extra step, in supporting. Please do also in the comment section below let me know what your thoughts are on this particular subject. Would you like to see a completely faithful adaptation of the Fleming books as like films or TV shows or are you kind of like me and would kind of like to take that vibe but put it in, in a slightly different media than what we're currently experiencing with the main film series? I'm really curious to know what the consensus is on this and with all that being said, so long for now Bond fans.